Head position is enormously important in the clinch. If you post the top of your head or your forehead under the opponent's chin, they're really going to struggle locking their hands around you or getting chest to chest. In a great interview on Technique with Luke Thomas in 2013, Chael Sonnen observed, I fought a guy named Michael Bisping, couldn't wrestle a lick, but he put that head where I grew up my entire life that being illegal to do, and it completely shut me down for an entire round. We've already discussed the role of the head block from a wrestling perspective, and its close ties with the cheeky nodder, care of Justin Gaethje. But head posting isn't just a wrestling technique. In boxing, if an infighter has his arms tied up, his classical escape is to post his head beneath his opponents, create separation between their chests, and snake his arms free in order to get back to work. You can see this in the second McGregor-Diaz fight, when McGregor attempted to keep Diaz from working along the fence. Offensively, the head post is the secret to striking powerfully in the clinch, as it allows the fighter to get their hips away from the opponent. This gives him room to throw knees with force. Along the fence or ropes, the head posting fighter can use his head to stand the opponent up out of their stance. When the man on the cage is pushed into the fence and his feet are level underneath him, he will struggle to generate power, while the man posting his head can create a stance and some room to hit through. John Jones is a master of this, and he used the position to batter Glover Teixeira's body while denying Teixeira his usual stance and hitting power. John Jones also uses the head post to lengthen and weaken his opponent's underhook. Watch Jones fight Daniel Cormier or Alexander Gustafsson, and he will often give up an underhook deliberately so that he can post his head on the opponent's shoulder, stretch their underhook out, and snap up his famous arm crank the moment that their elbow peeks out in front of his body. The way Cain Velasquez and others used the head post was to pin the opponent's head to the fence and then punch in front of their own face, but this isn't tremendously effective because the reason that the head post works for the infighter in the first place is that the man being posted on cannot punch effectively in front of his own face. Here Paul Felder actually gets some stank on an elbow from the head post, but he has to remove his head from posting on Oliveira for a split second before he can do it. Really the head post is best for striking the abdomen, particularly with knees, and this is what Edwards has done so ruthlessly in his last two fights, beating up the bodies of Donald Cerrone and Gunnar Nelson. Notice that often when Edwards gets the head post, he clamps down on the whizzer and anchors it inside of the opponent's thigh, allowing him another means to keep distance and placing further pressure on the opponent's underhook. While underhooks and overhooks are king for the most part, the subtle stuff happens in between and often with lesser controls. Here Donald Cerrone is in on a single along the fence, Edwards hits him with a couple of annoying strikes, and as Cerrone punches back, Edwards is able to get a bicep tie with his left hand. It's not an underhook, but it does allow him to turn Cerrone. Once Cerrone is against the fence, Edwards immediately goes to his head post underneath Cerrone's, but then stands up straight and clacks an elbow through instead. Here, Edwards drives the back of his hand into Cerrone's right bicep, as if to pummel through for an underhook, and as Cerrone clamps down his elbow to his side to prevent the underhook, Edwards pulls his head back and thwacks Cerrone with another elbow as he breaks from the clinch instead. When he can't head post, Edwards will use a neat little Sasai Surakomi Ashi to off-balance his man and threaten the front headlock. These are the little areas where Edwards finds his advantages from a more traditional chest-to-chest -chest clinch. Cerrone actually did one of his own in their fight, using a cross grip and holding the inside of Edwards' glove to keep a hold of it on the break as he threw a high kick. Then against Gunnar Nelson, Edwards showed his own neat trick from this cross grip. Notice that Edwards performs a shoulder roll to shuck off Nelson's collar tie and immediately returns with a straight punch. Leon Edwards has his hands full this weekend against Rafael dos Anjos, a brilliant clinch fighter in his own right, but it promises to be a splendid little scrap. I make these videos for fun and they aren't monetized, but you can keep up with all my ranting and writing by following Jack Slack MMA on Twitter or checking out my website fightprimer.com.